Hi you guys, it's Tanya, and today I want to share with you this uh, canvas that I created. Uh, this is part of the Jelly Arts Challenge that's going over on their Facebook wall. It's the Stars and Stripes. So I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of this canvas because I was unable to do a process video because of the time constraint. Uh, so I wanted to knock this out pretty quick. However, I will say that I do have a step out process video over on my blog that shows how I did the jelly print for the American flag that you see in the background. So there is a partial tutorial. You guys have seen me do embellishment clusters forever. You've been watching me do chalkboards for the last year or so. So um, I feel like the rest of that is, is, you know, just a matter of putting things together and an embellishment cluster. So I'm just going to kind of give you a quick gloss through of what's going on here. In the background, like I said, I pulled the jelly print. Yes, I know there are more stars there than what's on a real American flag, so it's somewhat of an impressionistic type thing. But I used the Balzer designs from uh, the Crafters Workshop, the mini Punchinella, to create the stars. So I just sort of went with what was on on the uh, jelly or the stencil and instead of trying to subtract out and make sure I only had 50 stars I, I just felt like that was just going to get too overwhelming so I just went with it and then after the jelly print was pulled I went back over the stencil again with the Prima textural accents in the crackle paste so uh, my stars have a really nice crackle look to them I'm not going to lift them up to get closer to the camera because I feel like uh, you guys can go see the close-up photos over on my blog to get a better idea. Uh, then once the plate was pulled, I pulled it, uh, I have an 8x10 jelly plate, so I pulled this on an 8.5x11, 110 pound cardstock from Georgia Pacific. Uh, when I pulled the plate, uh, the print, um, I did not allow it to dry completely. <laughs> I, I, you know, get a little impatient sometimes. But what I did was I crinkled it up into a ball while it was still, I would say, maybe 80% dry. And that's where you see all of these crinkles that are going on back here in the background. And then I used um, gel medium to add it to this uh, little 8x10 canvas. So it's going to be a really nice wall hanging. I love it. Very Americana. Um, great for the 4th of July. I have this uh, set aside as a special gift for a special someone in my life. So I hope she likes it. Um, as you guys know, uh, well, let me finish with the background first. There, when I put I, I laid it out flat after I crinkled it up. I laid it out really flat and I gel mediumed it to the canvas board here, the canvas. And then as I was rubbing it down, I had one of those oops moments where the paper started to lift off of uh, the top because it wasn't quite dry yet and I was still messing with it. And I, anyway, I made a mess out of it. So what I decided to do was just run with it. And then I took the Tim Holtz uh, Vintage Photo Stain and I just stained into these areas. And after it was dry, it looked as if I had done this on a piece of wood. So sometimes those oops moments are opportunities for uh, creating something fabulous. So go with them. Uh, so that's the background there. Uh, pretty straightforward. Just pulled a print, glued it down distressed it over the top. I took an archival ink pad and just kind of lightly went over it to pick up all of the wrinkles that you see here. And then I also used the fire brick uh, distress stain with mixed with some gel medium to create the color that you see here on the side. And then I also went over it with the um, archival ink pad once everything was dry. So uh, the whole thing has been sealed with gel medium in the background. So then I found this hymnal, and you guys know how much I love to use hymnals in my, my projects. Uh, this one was uh, God Save America. Uh, now, I do have, real quick before I go into this, but um, I do have a lot of people ask me where I got my hymnals from. So let me just tell you guys real quick. Um, I went to a church garage sale, and 
I bought the hymnal from the church garage sale and it's falling apart. Some of the pages are ripped. The, it's not, the spine isn't there for some of the, uh, you know, it's, it's pulled away from the spine, pulled away from the book. Um, some of the signatures are loose. Uh, there are scribbled ink pen marks on some of them. So this was a hymnal that was really probably destined for the garbage and they sold it anyway. So I was so thankful to have it. Uh, and I have been using this one hymnal for close to three or four years now. So I absolutely love it. It's a great way to add your music paper and uh, my Christian philosophy into all of my work. So that's where my hymnals come from if you guys are interested in that. So this particular hymnal really spoke to me uh, given the current events that are going on here in America. Um, I don't want to get into a political discussion here, but I just want to read this to you. It says, God save America. Uh, here may all races mingle together as children of God, uh, founding an empire on brotherly kindness, equal in liberty, made of one blood. So I really, that really spoke to me, and given our current events, I thought it really kind of fit into this. So then I also included the scripture. It says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And that's Psalms 33, 12. So what I decided to do was to include that onto a chalkboard piece just to kind of give some elevation and some, some depth to this uh, canvas. So for the hymnal, I just took this piece out and I put it on my uh, HP printer and printed it onto a piece of transparency. And... Then I took it out and I sprayed it with a little bit of acrylic paint, clear acrylic spray paint, just a light mist to fix to to just seal it. And then I glued it to the back of uh, on on top of my flag, kind of catty cornered, but on top of my flag with some gel medium and the gel medium dried clear it went on white but then it dried clear so uh, I really like the touch of the uh, hymnal there in my canvas i just think it's just it just made the whole thing come to life um god and country right so as far as the embellishment clusters go like i said you guys have seen me do this a thousand times but just as a quick walk through uh, i've got some wood veneer piece here that is from the dusty attic again i'll link up as many of these products as i can in my blog post over on my blog uh, these are the tattered the jumbo tattered florals from ta from uh, Tim Holtz, the alterations die from Sizzix and Tim Holtz. It's the jumbo one. And I used, don't tell him, but my husband's jeans to cut those out. And uh, then to give them a little bit of sparkle, the only blue I had actually in my stash was the navy blue from Heidi Swap Color Shine. And it gives them a little bit of a blue iridescent sheen to them. So that's really a nice add, added touch. And then for the center of the larger ones, I have these appliques that I got from a fabric store. They were on a long strip of lace and I just cut them apart. So they fit perfectly here. And then I just used some gemstones uh, there. I, I think they came from Hobby Lobby, their paper studio. So um, I put those there in the center. And then as far as the red velvet uh, flowers go, I really don't know who makes those. I just sort of, found them in my stash. They were out of the packaging and decided this was a great opportunity to use those. So go through your stash and see what you have. The wood veneers that you see that are leaves, those are from Prima. And then the star wood veneers are from Studio Calico. The chicken is from Jenny Bolin. It's a little piece of flair. I've had it forever, so it's nice to use. Uh, the wooden tags, you can find those in most craft stores in the wood section. Uh, they're pretty common and uh, they, I love them. I keep them on hand all the time, but these are, uh, I just spelled out the word USA here with those. And uh, there's a couple of metal pieces in here, some gears and that kind of stuff. And then I have a four over here that is a grunge board piece from Tim Holtz that I painted with the red, fire brick red. And then this is a cameo. Uh, that was gifted to me or something. I don't know how I ended up with it, but it was red. So I just kind of went over the cameo with some white so it would bring out the face on the cameo. 
And then all of the little glitz and glitter that you see here in the negative spaces, those were um, the goo that I've been making up a lot lately on all of my layouts. So I've showed you guys several times how to do this, but it's just um, a glossy gel medium, soft gel medium with uh, glass glitter in the sterling from Prima. And it also has some uh, glass beads and some micro beads uh, poured down in there, mixed up and then tucked in. And it's not quite dry yet. You can still see some white areas. All of that white will dry crystal clear when it's completely dry. So for the details on this, a detailed photos and a whole list of supplies and information about the contest with Jelly Print, please go check out my blog post. I'll put a link to that down below for you guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you have a safe 4th of July and you have fun. And remember that, um, you know, the reason we're celebrating and if you have a loved one who has uh, given their time uh, or their life to service for this country, I want to give you a big shout out, a giant hug, and a giant thank you. Because without your dedication or your family member's dedication uh, to this country, none of us would be here today. So thank you so much for that. And thank you, Jelly Arts, for this challenge. Uh, don't forget to go check out that blog post, and if you've enjoyed this production, please make sure you give me a thumbs up and share it with a friend.